If you're going into VCE in the next few years, then I often hear a lot of questions from parents and students around what subjects should you pick to maximize your ATAR score, but also if you wanna get into top degrees like medicine, law, computer science, engineering, commerce, or biomedicine. And so in this short video today, I'm gonna to share a few secrets that help me get an ATAR just below 98, but have also helped hundreds of other students go throughout high school and end up with high ATAR scores. And so the first one of these is knowing your target degree and career. And this is something I didn't really have much clarity on myself until more towards the end of year 12, but it's definitely something if I had have known this going into year 11 or particularly year 12, it would have helped a lot for a few key reasons that we'll go into in just a moment. Basically what this means is I'd recommend thinking about what you enjoy, what's interested you out of the subjects that you've done in the first few years of high school. Is there any that you've found particularly interesting? Because this can give you a bit of a clue as to what you might be interested in. Same thing, think about what are you interested in outside of school hours? What would you be happy to research and read about and learn about outside of school? That can often give you a bit of a hint in terms of possible target degrees and careers. Another really good thing to do in high school, which is not something I did, but people who did this, they got a lot out of it, is actually taking action and experiencing different things in high school. For example, I know a few people who have got volunteering experience, who have got part-time jobs or even work experience in the profession that they're interested in, in sort of hospitals or in law firms, which allows them to really experience what it's like to actually be a doctor or to be a lawyer or to be in different fields. And this is probably the best way because it gives you hands-on experience as to what it's like. Otherwise, if you can go to careers expos, if you can chat to people who are in the field and they can give you a bit of information around what it's like to be a doctor or what it's like to be a consultant, for example, that can give you a bit of an insight into whether these careers and whether the degrees that you need to do to get into these careers could be something that's of interest to you. There's kind of a few key reasons why this is really important. One reason is generally the students who do well in year 12 they're not just studying for no reason, they're studying because there's a specific career or degree that they wanna get into. And they use that as motivation to put in that extra work in year 12, because they wanna get into medicine, or they wanna get into law, or they wanna get into engineering, and they know they need to work hard in years 11 and 12 to get into that degree. The other reason is that there is a number of mandatory subjects. These are subjects that you have to study if you wanna get into these degrees. So for example, with medicine, if you don't study chemistry, it doesn't matter how well you do in all your other subjects, doesn't matter if you get a 99.95 ATAR score, you will not get into medicine because you haven't studied what they would call a prerequisite. And so it's really important to know what these prerequisites are for your degrees. Otherwise, you potentially do really well, you will get the scores you need overall, but you could not get accepted just because of this reason. And so this is probably the first thing to consider when you're choosing what subject should I pick First order of priority is make sure you do all the prerequisites that you need to do. Simplest way to figure this out is you can just look on the university website. They make it really easy to find this. You can just search up, for example, um, medicine at Monash University or commerce at University of Melbourne. They're gonna make it really clear what the prereqs are because they don't want you to miss out. They don't want you to not get in just because you didn't know what they are. It just takes you doing a little bit of research. For most people, this is probably gonna be maybe anywhere between one to three subjects. You have to do English. For some degrees, you might have to do a maths. For some degrees, you might have to do chemistry. And so this is probably gonna be anywhere between one to three out of your six subjects are things you just have to study. Outside of that though, you have a lot of choice. And so the question I often get from parents is, for the other subjects which aren't prerequisites, what should we choose? What subjects should you choose? And how should you determine which ones to choose and which ones to maybe avoid? Is there any advantage in doing certain subjects? There's kind of two key criteria, which is secrets three and four, that I would use to pick these final subjects. First one is just knowing what you're good at and picking subjects which you're naturally really good at. Now this one's kind of obvious, but often parents say, well, should we choose to do physics? Should we choose to do biology? Should we choose to do a really difficult maths? Because does that make me look better if I choose these harder subjects? And the truth is the universities, doesn't matter what degree it is, whether it's medicine, whether it's law, whether it's arts, whether it's engineering, they just look at the final ATAR score. They don't look at what subjects you've done aside from the mandatory subjects, the prerequisites. And so your first priority should just be picking subjects you're good at. If you're better at science subjects, then by all means choose physics, biology, chemistry, and so on. But if you're not as good at those, and you're better, for example, at business management or economics or accounting, which are three that I did, then there's no reason not to pick those ones. You just wanna pick the subjects that you're best at, because that's gonna allow you to get the best score. The other thing which really feeds into this is just knowing what you enjoy. So it's really important that you pick subjects you enjoy for the main reason that you're gonna put more work into it. If you look at all the subjects I did, 
which subjects did I do the most work for? It definitely wasn't the ones which were mandatory, which I had to do, but I didn't really want to do, but I just did them because I had to. It was the ones where I really enjoyed it. Business management, economics, I studied for these after school. On the weekends, I did extra reading about it. Before the year started, I did a little bit of extra prep work just because I really was interested in them. And I like chatting with my parents about them. I like chatting with friends about them. And that allowed me to go the extra mile. And ultimately, they were my two highest performing subjects. If you took them away, my ATAR score would have been significantly lower. And I probably actually wouldn't have been able to get into law. And that's why knowing what subjects you enjoy and knowing what subjects you're good at are probably two of the most important things to consider when you're picking the subjects that aren't mandatory ones. Now, one common question I get from a lot of people is what about scaling? I've heard that specialist maths that scales up 13, French scales up heaps, Latin scales up heaps, maths method scales up heaps. I don't have to do these subjects, but I'm considering should I do them because of scaling? And the truth is that you actually should definitely not pick any subjects based on scaling for one key reason. And that's just how scaling works. So if we ask ourselves, why do some subjects scale up and why do some subjects scale down? A lot of people often think, well, specialist maths is harder. The exam is harder. It's a harder subject to learn. And that's why it scales up more. But that's actually not how scaling works. What scaling is about is if you think about it, in VCE, for each subject, you get a score out of 50. Now this score, it's not a percentage. It's not 85%, it's not 90%, it's not 95%. It's a ranking of you compared to everyone else. So imagine a subject like specialist maths. What type of students generally do specialist maths? Is it below average students? I wouldn't say so. Is it average students? I wouldn't say so either. Generally, most people who do specialist maths are above average in the state. A lot of them will get 90 ATARs, 95 ATARs, 99 ATARs or even perfect ATARs. And so what that means is that to get an average score in specialist maths, if there wasn't scaling, it would be very hard because you'll be competing against a group of students who are statistically higher performing than other subjects. And so that's why specialist maths scales up so much. Not because it's harder, which it probably is quite a difficult subject and it is probably one of the harder ones, but it doesn't actually scale up for that reason. It scales up because the students in general who sit specialist maths or of a higher level of academic excellence, they end up getting higher average ATARs. And so that means it scales up more to make it level, to make it an even fair playing field. If you look at another subject on the other end of the spectrum, which will go with business management because it's one that I studied, that did scale down a little bit. It scaled down two or three. And again, the reason why it didn't scale down, or the reason why it scaled down wasn't because it's easier. It was just because the students on average who sit business management there's maybe slightly below average, the students who sit the subject. And so to make it an even playing field, they scale it down a little bit. And so for that reason, super important not to pick subjects based on scaling, because the purpose of scaling is not to give people an advantage, it's to make the playing field level. So it's actually gonna be a lot harder to, for example, get a 30 out of 50 in specialist maths than it is in business management. And that's why in spec it scales up heaps, whereas in BizMan, it scales down. And so overall key takeaways, if you wanna choose the right subjects in year 11 and year 12, maximize your chances of getting a high ATAR and have the best possible chance of getting into one of these degrees. Main things to think about, number one, you wanna get clarity on your target degree and career as fast as possible. So you know what you enjoy, what you're interested in, and that's gonna impact what subjects are mandatory, your prerequisite subjects, which is really easy to look up on university websites. That's probably gonna be anywhere from one to three subjects out of six. Then for the final two ones, we don't wanna consider scaling. We just wanna look at what are you good at, but then also what do you enjoy? So you can maximize your chances of getting a high ATAR score. And so that brings us to the end of this quick video on how to make sure you choose the right subjects in VC. We'll be posting a lot more videos on how to succeed in VC on this channel. And so I look forward to seeing you in the next one.